Hello, GovCon winners, and welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks, and I have been awarded well over $50 million in federal government contracts. You're gonna lean, need to lean in for this one. 70 plus billion. These are dollar amounts associated with the realm of construction. These numbers represent what the federal government is spending in this area. These numbers represent why I am making this video today so that you have the knowledge, strategies to go forward, potentially pursue construction, or if you're already in construction, to win additional contracts. When I first started out well over 10 years ago, I thought construction was like building buildings or tearing down walls and putting up new walls or something with drywall. It's what I thought. I had no idea. I mean, maybe you're laughing at me. I get it. I had no clue. I knew the government spent on construction, but I thought it was literally the construction of a building. Well, that is not the case whatsoever. Technically, this kind of area, this space is defined as facilities and construction. And I'm going to go over all of these areas that are connected to it, which gets us to our very first takeaway. Construction encompasses, and, and please keep in mind, I'm going to use the term construction to cover all of these areas. Construction, and this is why it's important, it encompasses things like paving roads, putting up fences, facility management. So what does all this mean? This means that our first amazing tip, digging deep, you don't always need to be bonded. This was another myth I heard often. Uh, I got associated with a construction group that um, centers around black women. And they would talk about this whole bonding problem. And I attended a few construction meetings just because I was just interested when I first started out. I'd spent 10 plus years trying to figure things out. And that's why I'm here today. So y'all ain't got to go through all that, right? So I was like, bonding? I, okay, I don't want to get involved in this. So I'm not going to go into construction. But here's what I've learned. Some of these smaller projects, carpet cleaning, carpet repair, painting, they don't always require bonding. So if you're interested in this space, you don't always need to have bonding. The other thing to really emphasize, really hone in on, and that is due to the infrastructure bill, there's so much money out there around construction facilities related areas. Facilities could be cleaning of a building, management of a building, management of property, property management, things of that nature. There's so much money out there. So this is a great opportunity to get involved. And when I say get involved, the other kind of tip strategy here is that you can get involved as a prime contractor. You can get involved as a subcontractor. You can get involved just doing research to see if this is even an area you want to pursue. So for instance, I have noticed just gleaming SAM.gov, there is a plethora of set-asides, in particular 8A, all around these areas. I personally know of a woman who I met when I first started out. Her background was in accounting, and she started um, her own government contracting company. She eventually uh, earned an 8A set-aside, and shortly after... And this was several years ago. She purchased a construction company. I remember thinking, why would she do that? Like, I'm like, that's so silly. <laughs> yeah, because I had no clue, right? I'm thinking construction is you're building a building. That's construction. Had no idea. It's the smartest thing ever. I bet she's just cleaning up as an 8A who purchased a construction company. That way, she didn't have to worry about past performance. She probably didn't have to worry about getting bonding for the bigger projects. And she's probably off doing extremely well. So when it comes to this space, yes, you could purchase a company 
but there's so many different opportunities out there that are thousands of dollars all the way to millions, half a billion in, of dollars. And the other strategy is this. Many people, many companies go after what I call the shiny, the bright and shiny, the flashy. They're going after the big ones, right? I want that big contract, the big ones. And they're kind of scoffing at, oh, I don't want the $2,000 contract or $3,000 or $5,000 contract. So they tend to overlook the smaller opportunities. This is a golden place for you to really hone in, find, bid, and win profitable work in this area because so many are focused on the bigger opportunities that may require bonding, may require past performance questionnaires, where if you get into the smaller ones where they're like, we just need someone to paint some walls. We just need someone to help us eradicate some insects. We just need someone to clean the carpet. Chances are your competition is going to be low, 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 you know, like a flow rider song, right? That's what's going to end up happening. So it's a great space because also you probably don't need bonding. I want to also emphasize the bonding piece is dependent on each opportunity. The other thing to note in this construction space is you have agencies such as FAA where they don't follow the FAR regulations. So meaning for those of you who may be wondering like what, what's going on with all these acronyms? The Federal Aviation Administration, they do not follow the federal acquisition rules and regulations. Therefore, there are some things that you can maybe get away with by bidding on FAA work, by working with the FAA that you couldn't with Army, Air Force, or other agencies. So I strongly encourage you, especially if you have an 8A, because I have noticed that the FAA has a ton of 8A work and they really love working with 8As. How do I know this? because I have an amazing mentee and I went with her to the FAA for an in-person capability brief and they shared so much information because the entire um, meeting basically centered around construction. And so I share this with you all because this is an agency that you may want to consider doing business with. Also keep in mind that in this construction realm, it also covers materials, all different types of materials, whether you're selling the materials to an agency that they're gonna use them their own accord, or if you're buying materials to then use for some type of effort, like HVAC, that's another huge area that's covered under what I call construction or the government calls you know, facilities and construction. One thing to keep in mind, and this is another good strategy. Yes, there's shortage. Yes, there's potential issues with, um, you know, possible recession. Yes, it can be challenging to find people to install work. However, comma, the government knows this. So for the most part, they're very flexible with you as long as you ask permission instead of forgiveness. Meaning you win some HVAC work and typically with these um, different kind of construction contracts, there's a buy America clause that a certain percentage of the product must involve materials from America or manufactured in America. Every agency is different. I believe FAA has a higher percentage of what's required for the buy America requirement. But again, it's based on every single opportunity and each and every agency may differ. So you win some HVAC work, you're excited, you have your quote, maybe prices change, maybe things significantly increased, maybe it's a little more challenging for you to get people to do the work. You go to the agency and then promise you they're going to work with you. They understand, they know. And so that's the other really cool thing about this is I have seen that they're so flexible with adding additional funds if the materials have increased in price. And this is brilliant. Because in training and development, my sweet spot, I haven't really run across that a lot. <laughs> Agencies aren't like opening their door saying, yes, you want to charge us more for a personality assessment because of issues with, you know, getting things, uh, getting products across the oceans. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Sure. Why not? No, no, no one ever says that. 
you know, training and development, human resources, those are the areas that are like, oh, those are cute. <laughs> so cute. Right. But construction, you know, it's like, hey, I need beams. I need a floor. I need the parking lot repaved. So as a result of that, this really provides you the opportunity to really maximize your profits. This is definitely an area where you can easily get 35 all the way up to potentially 80% profits on this. The other strategy is if this is not your wheelhouse, say you don't have any experience, like personal experience in construction, guess what? It's okay. You don't have to purchase a business as I stated. Strategy is you can partner. Partner with someone who offers what you're bidding on or who offers what you have one work involving. So for instance, I came across a gentleman, his background, his forte is cement. That's his thing. And what happens, these prime contractors end up subcontracting to him. So he's making amazing money. He has these great profits. He's doing work with the federal government. And guess what? He's not in SAM. He's not in 8A. He's not a service disabled business officially through, you know, the government channels. He's a subcontractor making money through a prime contractor. So if you're in the position of the prime, there are many people like him that are out there that who would love to provide these services. And they are located across America. The other part to this is I've come across many who I mentor, who just reach out to me. And thank you all so much for doing that. And one thing people will say is, well, where do I like find these people? If I win work in Idaho, how do I know if someone's a great painter or they're a great plumber or they can fix an elevator? Being resourceful is a big strategy in this space because especially with facilities and construction, I mean, there are some things that you can see, but then there are other things that you may not really know, did they do a good or bad job? It's just the nature of the work. So what's really good is to be resourceful, connect with people through, whether it's a LinkedIn, it's referrals of other people, asking for references. And I know you may be thinking, really, Kizzy, I just need someone to do this carpet cleaning job. I'm going to ask them for references. Yeah, if you don't want to get burned, that's what you're going to do because you have to remember these are taxpayer dollars. Whether an agency follows the FAR or not, all the responsibility lands on you if you're the prime. If you're the sub, things are a little different. You know, it's like you're a supporting player on a team. You may not be LeBron, but you're someone on the team that you have a jersey, you're making lots of money. We may not know who you are, but you're a big player. You're still a big part of the team. You're still a big player because you made it to the NBA, right? And the same goes for construction in the federal government. You may not be the prime. You may not even be a sub. You may be a sub, 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 sub of a sub. But what you're doing is still important. You just don't have all of that responsibility and all of the liability. And speaking of liability, you may also wonder, what about insurance? What about certifications? What about any of that? Those are questions that you have to look into as an entrepreneur. I can't tell you, I can't speak from what every single state requires when you enter this realm, but here's what I can speak from. What is required by every single contract? That's the key. What do they require? What type of insurance or certifications do they require? Also, you may want to look into groups such as the construction association. There are several different construction groups out there, but you may want to also look into joining or attending some of their meetings because it's not only going to help you with networking and finding trusted you know, subcontractors across America and maybe even across the world, because remember, the government purchases construction everywhere, everywhere everywhere in the world, which is, this is so amazing, over $70 billion. So you definitely wanna do that, as well as they could potentially help you with any type of certifications or things that you need. Very vital to look into this. I also want to cover, and I have notes here because there's so many things here. Again, what all goes into facilities and construction? You have equipment, materials, supplies, 
like plumbing, doors, lumber, uh, metal bars, rope, paint, pipes, hand and measuring tools, road and highway, construction, mining, highway maintenance, um, tractors, signs, road, bridges, sidewalks, electrical and electronic, electronic equipment, components, lighting, electric wire, power and distribution equipment. Finally, facilities and structures, fencing, roofing, construction of structures and facilities, which I thought was, you know, construction, elevators, escalators, lifts, salvage, demolition, HVAC, mechanical, maintenance, repair, alteration of um, any type of real estate property. You can see, you can hear, the sky's the limit. Every single agency needs something like this. That's why it's one of the top areas for government contracting. Another quick strategy is you just gotta get people to know, like, and trust you. And especially in this area where they can see it, they may not be able to see everything, right? As we talked about, I'm not gonna be able to see necessarily the work of the electrician. I mean, if the light's working, hey, I guess they did a great job, right? But it's still one of these industries where it's like you you really see the end product on like training and some things around communication. It's it's a little more soft, as, as we say, like soft skills. <laughs> that's the term that's used. So the point is you want to make sure you're constantly doing an amazing job because the sky's the limit as far as what you could be paid to do. So as long as you really capture before and after you deliver not only on the end product, but any kind of paperwork, binders, reports that you need to provide, they are going to love you. They're going to want to do more work with you because this is a space where I think of your home, right? Dishwasher breaks, wash machine breaks. When my stepdad, his lawnmower just broke, you need a wall painted maybe of an issue where a tree fell down unexpectedly. All of these things are a pain. They're a pain in you know where. And maybe some of you watching, listening, you're like, I got that. I, I can take care of all that. Okay, great. I'm not. <laughs> some things maybe. Because it's a pain. And I want it resolved as quickly as possible because it's a space I'm constantly in, right? I'm constantly at home. No different than the federal government. They're constantly aware that they have a physical office, may not be going to it all the time, but hey, they still want to make sure it's a great office or they know that they have this parking lot and they don't have to worry about, man, what are we going to do come winter? Because we know the parking lot needs to be repaved or, oh my gosh, we know we have that fence. It's, it's a security issue. We got to figure out how we're going to do this. These are things, these are pains that are no different than if it were your own personal amazing home or dwelling that you just don't want to deal with because it's a pain, even if you know how to fix it. The same goes for the gov federal government. So my amazing GovCon winners, please check out the construction realm. I promise you, there's tons of people out there who want to help, who want to partner with you. I promise you, there's tons of money in this area, over 70 billion, trillion in the infrastructure bill. I promise you that you not only can, but you will be able to find, bid, and win profitable government contracts, whether it's in construction or another area. Please check out govconwinners.com if you're interested in my upcoming course that I will launch very soon. I'm going to open up pre-enrollment so you can get in because when I close that enrollment, it's going to be closed, y'all. It's closed. I'll share more, but this is the time. Get on that wait list. And thank you all so much for watching, for the comments, for your suggestions. I love and adore each and every one of you. This is so amazing. I get to do this. Just help you all, right? So don't forget, y'all.